Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How's everybody doing? I hope you're having a blessed Sunday. Hope you've had a great weekend. It was a little rainy, but at least it cooled everything off, right? Um, we just want to welcome everybody here tonight with us and uh, for joining us. We just want to say thank you. Um, as you log in, um, just want to give everybody a second here and just tell us where you're joining us from. Um, let me switch some things over so we could see your chats. And uh, we just want to tell y'all, uh, welcome. Tonight, you just have us. Amen. Um, we are just riding solo tonight. No group, uh, no group chats. But I think the what the Lord has given us tonight, really at the last minute, um, could really have a huge impact on your life. And so again, as you join us, as you come on, we just want you to say, hey, let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, drop something in the comments, share it, tag someone in it, and just help us to get the, the gospel of Christ out. Amen. And so uh, what we're going to be talking tonight uh, is, man, I, I don't like the way my eyes are looking down and it's so different. Let me slide this over. I got I got, I got to change something. I um, tried to um, share the story and it's not sharing. My eyes are way, way, way off of the camera. That's Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight, I believe is one of the most crucial parts of our walk with the Lord. Um, because as we begin to walk with the Lord, there are so many different, um, elements and, and things that come to fruition that God allows, um, to be useful in our life. And I believe that, uh, um, this is one of the most under misunderstood, um, the fear of God. So we'll be talking tonight on the fear of God. And if you have been with the Lord at any point in your life uh, for a long period of time, whether you've fallen away um, or whether you're, you've been walking with the Lord for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, right? Uh, the fear of the Lord is so important mm -hmm. to us in our life and understanding really the immense hugeness of who God is. And, but it always seems to be one of those things that we hear, we talk to the lost people of the world and, and they're like, well, you know, I just, you know, this, this angry, mean God, and it's so misperceived. And, and I've even had, you know, friends, great friends ask me, you know, how am I supposed to love a, a God that I'm supposed to fear? And I think it's because of the misunderstanding that we have about just the word in itself. Um, but I think it's also a misunderstanding about the relationship. Yeah. Um, that we have with the Father through Christ Jesus. And so I believe that this is going to be a, a, an incredible. So we're just going to have a discussion, you know, is it, but I, I'm going to do a lot of teaching tonight because I, I believe that if we walk with the fear of the Lord in our life, it just uh, enables our heart to be in a place of receiving who God really is. And it's so important, so important. But I want to specify a couple different things before we get started. Like, the love of God is what draws men to repentance. Mm -hmm. um, 1 Corinthians 5, verse 12 and 13, you know, Paul starts addressing some things about the difference between in the church and out of the church. And a lot of times, especially the way I, I preach, you know, a lot, a lot of people say, man, it's kind of heavy, kind of judgy, right? It's kind of, and, and but we have to be really clear about something. Like when I preach, if, in, unless I'm out sharing and evangelizing on the streets, right? I'm preaching to the church. And so when we begin to share with one another and when we preach together with each other, like when we come together as a body of believers, there should be a weight of fear in that. Mm -hmm. Not a fear as in like a trembling horror movie scary thing, right? right? That, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Like that's not what we're talking about when yeah. we talk about the fear of the Lord. What we do want to understand is because of who he is, like he holds the sun in yeah. all of its burning frenzy in the palm of his hand, like he created all things. Mm -hmm. And so when we posture our heart to really begin to know the Lord, like there should be a healthy fear. Mm -hmm. Now, let's let, let's look at that from the outside of the church. Now, the love of God is what draws men to repentance. So I don't expect somebody who doesn't know the Lord or who has never had an encounter with the Lord, like I don't expect them to fear the Lord. Like that's not like sometimes I think we miss that in the church because we expect we just we just jump immediately and think that everybody should have this fear of God. 
So again, you know, I, I don't believe at all that that the the lost world should fear God. I don't even believe. I can't point to any scripture right that says that the fear of God should lead us to repent and be saved. Amen. And that's that's kind of a weighty one. So, you know, again, if, you know, if, if you're joining us, drop something in the emojis to give us a thumbs up. Just say, hey, um, and, and we just want to appreciate you and recognize you. But straight up, like when I was being saved, right, the, the love of God showed up into the room that I was in. I wasn't in a church. I was in my mom's living room. Right. And, and I experienced his love. Mm -hmm. And so the for the lost world, the Bible was very, very clear that there there is a judgment day that will come. Right. And, and the, 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 the kings of the earth will try to hide under rocks and say, let the rocks even drop on me and they will fear God. But that is in the last days. That's like in the very, very, uh, you know, in, in, in the return and the tribulations and all that stuff in Revelation. But right now, in the dispensation of grace, like the love of God, Romans um, 2, I think it's verse 5. Um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But it says that the love of God draws them into repentance. So when I'm out in the, in the world and I'm sinning and I don't know who God is and I don't understand him, you know, again, in, in, in Romans, it says that while we were yet sinners, Christ mm -hmm. died for us. Like that's the love that God has. And when we encounter that love, Mm -hmm. It draws us to a place in our life of repentance, mm -hmm. right? So, so now I can come and I can understand like God, man, even while I was lost, while I was doing all this bad stuff, while I was still just, when I was a drug addict, when I was running around, when I was running, you know, the streets, like, man, God still gave his son for me. Like that is the love of God that draws us to repentance, yeah. right? And so that's what it takes for the lost world. That's why Paul says, I don't judge within the church. Like that's up to God. Mm -hmm. like, that's that. Um, uh, excuse me. I don't judge with outside, outside the church. The church. That's, that's up to God. God will deal with those outside of the church. But in the church, there has to be a healthy fear of the Lord. And so I think that gets twisted a lot of times. And I want to equip you to be able to talk to the lost world because we can't beat the lost world down mm -hmm. with a wagging finger that one day they're going to stand before the judgment seat of God and blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and, and so because if that happens, let, let, let me give you all a real good clue right here. If, if we get people saved by the fear of God, one day they're going to walk outside and they're going to go, well, Jesus didn't return today because they didn't enter the relationship with God because of love. Like me and her, didn't enter a relationship of fear, mm -hmm. right? We entered our relationship in a place of love. Mm -hmm. And so what happens if we re entered the relationship because we heard a preacher preaching real heavy on the book of Revelation and it scared us mm -hmm. and we just didn't want to burn in hell. Yeah. Like that may turn us for a little while, mm -hmm. but that relationship is built on a rocky foundation, mm -hmm. right? Jesus did not reflect the right. judgment of God. He said, I did not come to judge the world. It, he reflected the love of God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can see that. And while we enter, the closer the relationship, the greater the fear. All a, absolutely, Miss Roseanne. And so as we begin to understand who God is out of that love built relationship, who is the chief cornerstone? It's the love of God. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus Christ himself, right? It is the visible of the invisible God. It is the essence of God's love for us, right? John 3, 16, right? And so as we begin that conversation with the Father through his love and our relationship becomes grounded in the love of God, healthy fear develops, mm -hmm. okay? And that's, that's, I think that's been such a, a misconstrued thing in our society, um, because we we want to we just want to see people saved and that's that's a good thing right but we can preach so heavy in the book of revelation that we're scaring people Ooh, to yeah. the altar yeah and it just don't last mm -hmm. because that individual is going to go outside they're going to go well Jesus didn't come back today mm -hmm. I can I can start doing a little bit of the, those things and begin to lean back into their life because their relationship or their old life because their relationship wasn't founded on the love of God. Yeah. It was founded on the fear of God, right? So what I'm saying is the fear of God is for the church mm -hmm. and the love of God is for the lost world. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, like he so loved the world when it was sin, when it was just so sinful, like men's heart was just so beyond um, the, the good things, right, that God had to offer. We were just so lost, but he still loved us enough to send his son. Now we walk into that relationship and we begin to understand and pursue the father. And we begin again to understand how immense we understand the relationship that we have mm -hmm. with him and in all absolute all of absolutely mm -hmm. reference uh, a reverence of him that now we can begin to walk in the fear of the Lord. OK, yeah. this is one of the biggest missing puzzles to me. Right. To, to, to me in the lives of many Christians today in the American church. Why would I say that? Is because we be, we have begun to treat the church like a coffee shop, like we let our kids run around. Like I'm always getting on to my kids because mm -hmm. it's kind of our culture yeah. that we just run around like our heads on fire. We just walk into the you know, we bring our drinks and all this other stuff. Sure, yeah. Because we've lost a reverence for the father. Mm -hmm. So when we begin to seek after that thing in our life, like that is when God really postures our heart for the reception mm -hmm. of who he really is, mm -hmm. because we honor him as God, as Abba Father, but also as the God of this universe. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't need man's approval mm -hmm. to be God. And I think sometimes because the, the American culture, we're so self-centered, we're so prideful in, 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 in our and in, in just our being. Right. Is that we just think that, man, the world just revolves around us. Mm -hmm. And so in that we lose the fear of God because we kind of kick it away of going, well, we shouldn't really, you know, fear, quote unquote, mm -hmm. fear the father because he's just a good daddy. And that's true. Yeah. That's true. I'm not taking anything away from his goodness. But when we begin to posture our heart as he is God and we are not, mm -hmm. it really aligns things for our heart posture in yeah. the relationship with him. So I want to read Job 28, 28. He said this to man, um, you know, to Job, and, and it was kind of groundbreaking. Right. And Job was a man who hasn't received the, the blood of Christ, obviously. Right. The oldest book in the Bible. But I think this begins to set up the fear of God very well, right? And to man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to talk about in the fear of the Lord is why does that really begin to, to transform our minds to be that of an understanding mind? But why is, you know, Proverbs, I think in four different Proverbs, the, the Bible tells us that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And so if we're haphazard with the father, right, if we just, you know, we, we come and go as we please, we don't have fear of God in our life. We, we will neglect that side of our life to become wise in him. Mm. OK, because it's the beginning of wisdom yeah. it is the fear of the Lord. Yeah. And so but I want to I want to go over what the word fear itself means. In Hebrew, the word is yare. It means to revere. So it doesn't mean to shy away, to be afraid of. It is a reverence. The same way that we would feel even as parents, right, is that my children, because of the relationship that we have and, and, and the placement that God has for both me and my children, right, there is a reverence in my home. Like I expect my children to, to talk to me a certain way, to, to act a certain way around me. We, we you know, we, we hear people start, say a certain thing and we go, you wouldn't say that around your grandma, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you wouldn't say that around your pastor, right? Right. It's because there's a healthy fear there. And when we talk about fear, a lot of times we don't use that word in the English language, but it is, there's a reverence there that we should have with God. It means to stand in awe of a person because of their position uh, or uh, or or an entity. And that God is exalted above, even if mentally or in actuality, in reverence to an authority or power. OK, mm -hmm. that's the fear of God that begins uh, understanding like th th this. This is what heart posture is to God is we don't go in, you know, I, I love the book of Esther, 
right? That she was going into the king and she was so afraid of her for her life. She had to tell all of the country fast and pray for me. Mm. Like that has to be our position with the father to become wise in him and understanding like God tells us to fear him. And it's not to be shied away from, you know, when, when he shows up on the mountain with the children of Israel, even and the lightning and the thunders and, and all this incredible stuff. It wasn't that so set so that the children would would run or flee from him. That was the last thing he wanted to do. But yeah. what he did want to do was show them his position and who he really was. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so in the church, a lot of times, you know, we, we can just get into this mundane uh, cycle of this is just what I do. And we never become more wise wow. because we don't have the fear of God operating in our life. Like every time that we meet with the father, even in our own closet, we should enter in with a heart posture that I can't even believe he's meeting with me. What's up, Julio? Hey, my realtor brother. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Whoop, whoop. And uh, but when we don't have that relationship, when we don't have the fear of God in our lives, like we, we will not grow. We will get stagnant in the relationship with God because it's it's hard for us to realize what a, what an abundance of mercy that we have received to even be in the presence of a merciful, perfect yeah amazing. You can't put it into words who God is and to understand that now he lets me in his presence. Mm -hmm. Like that should bring an all. If I oh, go and yeah. yeah, if I go and meet some person, <clears throat> let, let, let's, let's say just one day I get to meet, oh, I don't know. Um, he, he's, he's gone now, but this is one of my, one of my greatest people in the, on the planet that ever lived was Bobby Bowden. I, I'm an FSU fan. Right. And if I was to get to meet Bobby Bowden, I would be lost for words. Amen. I would be in this place of, oh, like shut down, like trying to just get myself back together because of the reverence that I would have for him. How much more should we have our heart postured toward getting to sit down and meet with Abba Father, the yeah. creator of all of the universe? So that's what the Bible means when it says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. Because when your heart is postured that way, mm -hmm. that you know that anything he, that he gives you is nuggets, is, is something you can place your life on. Like the fear of God enters us into even being able to read the word with a with a heart posture correctly that yeah. these are promises now that I can place my life upon. Mm -hmm. Amen. Somebody like that's the, that's the heart posture. That's the fear of the Lord. What it does to our life. Mm -hmm. um, Proverbs 15, 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction for wisdom and before honor comes humility. Amen. When we fear God, that is a humility. It's a stance of humility in ourselves. Uh, the fear of God is anti pride. I'm going to say that again. The fear of God is anti-pride. Like the fear of God rips you and strips you of pride. When you can go and, and yeah. usher in to God's presence and just be in awe of who he is as the creator of the universe that set all things in motion, that doesn't even live in our corridor of time, right? It heart postures us against pride. Because we understand that we are so we're dust and ashes, yeah. right? And, and and that doesn't I'm not belittling anybody because this is where our identity is found. And we're going to go into that in just a minute. But as, as we begin to heart posture into the fear of God, it doesn't mean that we're running away from him. It means that we're honoring his position and we're understanding ours. Yeah. Amen. You got anything to add? What, what scripture you just said? Uh, 1533 Proverbs. Yeah, Proverbs 8, 13 says, Wisdom pours into you when you begin to hate every form of evil in your life. For that's what worship and fearing God is all about. Mm -hmm. Then you will discover that your pomp pompous pride mm -hmm. and perverse speech are the very ways of wickedness that I hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so good. And they, that's it. It said exactly what yeah. we're talking yeah. about here, right? It's anti pride. The fear of the Lord is anti pride and it's needed. Like if, if, if we're grown stagnant in a place of our life, check your fear, check the fear of the Lord in your life. And so I, I, I I'm going to transition this even to a lot of people say the, so the Bible will contradict itself. Why should we fear the Lord 
if he tells in second Timothy, right, that God doesn't give you a spirit of fear. Right. All right. So I want to cover that word this in, in, in that 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 ver, uh, verse in second Timothy that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, sound mind. Mm -hmm. Right. So if why are we supposed to love uh, a, a God who says to fear me, but he doesn't give us a spirit of fear, fear. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so that word is Delia. And that means cowardice. Mm. Come on, somebody. Mm. That means cowardice. That means that he is stripping you of your confidence, mm -hmm. of your godfidence. This is not what God gives us. Right. God does not make us cowards. Right. The fear of the God, fear of God will make you anti-coward because we understand that I have to fear God over man. And so whatever he's telling me to do, I honor God in such a way of my life that it doesn't matter what anything else happens. So it makes me a strong individual. It also means timidity, mm -hmm. fear, and unmanliness. The Strong's Concordance says it's it, it, the, the, the word there that God doesn't give us a spirit of unmanliness, okay? To denote a, a cowarding, a coward, cowering away from due to timidity. That is what God does not give us. So when we're when we're presented with these on the streets, guys, like it's important that we're equipped to have these conversations with the lost world. Well, why should I fear a God, right? Or why should I love of God a God who tells me to fear Him? Mm -hmm. Like we need to be equipped to have these conversations on the street because there's coming a great harvest right now. Like we are we are on the precipice. It's it's already beginning. And God said to pray for laborers to be sent into the harvest. Well, the, the world looks at fear as, you know, Satan's fear of terror and things like that. Horror movies. But God doesn't look at that uh, mm -hmm. like that. He mm -hmm. doesn't want us to look at him like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different kind of fear. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's missing in our church. Like straight yeah. up. Straight up, like we say, well, if, if the church doesn't play the right music, if, if we don't like when does it get back to just being about the fear of God? Mm -hmm. When does it when, when when does it just get back about getting plugged into a place and going, look, I'm just going to serve because I fear the Lord. I'm giving him reverence and he is my authority. If he told me to get plugged in here, mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody else says. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. If he told my told me don't not to forsake the gathering of the saints mm -hmm. like that scripture. And because of who he is, not because of what the last church did to me, come on somebody mm -hmm. like not, not because of that person that offended me, not because of the, uh, my, my feelings that got wrecked in that last ministry, not because these people don't even appreciate me, not because they talk about me behind my back, like not because they, 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 you know, are, are, are counterfeit counterfeiting, you know, the, the Holy spirit, like that's all, that's all terrible stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't need to denote that, right. We don't need to take out the, the, you know, the, our, our, our truthfulness of where we're walking, but if we fear God, none of that stuff matters. Right. If God says, go get plugged in and don't forsake the gathering of the saints, then we'll get off our tail and get out of the bed on Sunday mornings and go get plugged in somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm not telling you that every place is for everybody. That's not what I'm saying. But if we listen to the voice of God, if we listen to the spirit of the Lord. Right. And we fear him and we have a heart posture to do what he says because he is who he is. Then we will go to church. Mm -hmm. The church numbers are, you know, in, in this country are, are dramatically decreasing. Yeah. Why? Because we walk in pride. Mm -hmm. Because we, <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. The church numbers are decreasing because we walk in pride. Mm. Are, are, are there out, are the pastors out there doing some really foul things? Absolutely. hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Are there, there, there are people out there taking money? Absolutely. hundred percent. You know, are, are, am I defending any of that? No way. Not no, not in my wildest dreams would I defend, you know, evil in the, in the pulpit. But what I am saying is that if we fear God, mm -hmm. that's what matters. Yeah. Amen. And so, yeah. uh, um, it, it, it will completely strip us from our pride and it postures us to receive the blessings of God, not only the blessings of God, but the word of God. Amen. Um, I used to think about, uh, how, how the, the Lord worked on me for the first few years, um, of, of my life, of, of my, my walk with him, not to weaponize scripture. Pamela's heard me talk about this a lot. Um, because I saw um, so much of um, the body weaponizing scripture against one another. 
We all know what happens, right? We all we all get that that we 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 hear this scripture and we go, well, I know somebody that's doing that. Oh, I, I need to share that scripture to get them, right? Oh, I sure hope my husband's listening. I, I sure hope my wife's heard that, right? And we begin to weaponize scripture in our own mind. That is anti fear of the I Lord. I have actually been in a room where when the preacher spoke, they said, "Did you hear that?" to this <laughs> to the spouse, right? Right. They was talking to you. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and and so, it you know, the fear of the Lord postures us against that. Right. When we fear God, like we would never come against his saints in yeah. a way like that. Mm -hmm. And, it, it you know, we have this heart posture of weaponizing scripture when we're not walking in the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> I'm telling you right now that if you have been saved for longer than three minutes, then you have heard of heard a scripture. And you automatically thought about somebody who who was walking <laughs> contrary to that scripture. Right. And so this is the reason that a lot of the people are turned off with the church. I'm yeah. going to tell you straight up, like like people don't want to come to church because they view us as hypocritical and judgmental. Mm -hmm. Right. And that goes right back to what I was talking about at the beginning of this. Like mm -hmm. we have to posture ourselves of knowing that God will deal with the outside of the mm -hmm. church. Like in the church, there needs to be heavy preaching. There needs to be conviction. There needs to be the fear of the Lord. There needs to be some weight brought. There needs to be Holy Spirit. <laughs> and holiness. And yes. we're, we're going to get to that in a yes. minute. But there needs to be holiness in the church. And we need to hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. And if we don't enter into those relationships in love, it'll never happen. Right. Right. So that again, right. That that the, But we can't heart posture ourselves into into hearing scripture and God's go when I'm getting you don't think about them <laughs> don't think about them the fear of the Lord will rebuke those thoughts out of your mind because you know that God deals with us first right. get the speck out of your own eye before you deal with the beam and or get the beam out of That's your right. own eye before you deal with the speck in your brother's eye mm -hmm. right and so the fear of the Lord is so needed in mm -hmm. our church today because we that's that's how we love one another but that's how we walk a life that's worthy of the Holy Spirit right yeah and and, and you know good Lord none of us are worthy Right. But but there should be a healthy fear of the Lord. And so I want to read something out of uh, one of my theological workbooks. Great, great workbook. Um, by the way, if, if you guys look for more study, um, wonderful, wonderful uh, book. But um, in several passages, fearing and proper living are so closely related as to be virtually synonymous. Ideas. It is plausible that this usage of to fear as a virtual synonym for righteous living or piety grew out of the viewing of fear in any of the senses above. So what it's saying is that the fear of God is synonymous with living holy. I'm going to say that again. Like it is impossible to live holy without the fear of God in our lives. If we don't understand the fear of God in our lives, like people will look at us and think we're, we're hypocritical because they'll, consistently call out problems in our own life, in our own walk. They'll point back to something and go, hold on, now you was cussing yesterday. Now you're trying to tell me about how good your God is. You know, you you were drinking yesterday and now you're telling me don't get drunk. You were smoking weed, you know, last week. I know, I know who you were running with. And now you're trying to tell me how good your God is, right? So this is a part of, of the body of Christ right now that we have to begin to seek holiness. Now, we're not going to be perfect. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying there has to be a fear of God that begins to pull us. There has in. to be a separation. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the world sees that. They see, they see us. If we're more like them, they're like, well, what do I want to change for? Mm -hmm. If they act just like me, what do I need to change for? Yeah. Yeah. And where does that start? Yeah. It starts with the fear of God, mm -hmm. right? Um, man, I'm I'm, I'm going to I'm going to share this like, you know, me and Pamela, like any any new couples right over the first few years, uh, we had been through so many bad relationships and craziness in our own lives. Like when we, we first got married, like everybody has the doubts, right? Oh, I wonder if wonder, if, you know, somebody's winking at my wife. I wonder if my wife. Uh, and, you know, she's thinking, oh, man, he works at Gulfstream. I wonder if some girl's pushing up on him at Gulfstream, right? These things happen in a marriage. Yeah. And one day we were having this discussion and y'all straight up. I said, baby, 
I would not cheat on you. One of the reasons is the reason I wouldn't cheat on you is because I love you and, and I wouldn't do anything like that to you. But you know, the main reason <laughs> that I would not cheat on you is the fear of God in my life. Like I know who he is mm -hmm. and I know the relationship she carried with him. Mm -hmm. I know how often she sought him and sought his face. Mm -hmm. So the fear of God would check me in my own life. Mm -hmm. And if my eyes began to wonder, even for half a second, I'm getting checked because I have a fear mm -hmm. of God, a reverence for who he is, not a trembling, not a, not right. a, not a, I want to stay away from him, not a terror, mm -hmm. like a horror movie. Right. Right. But, and people saw that in my life. People, people saw that I didn't walk the same. I didn't talk the same. Mm -hmm. I wasn't who I used to be. Right. And so when we carry a fear of God in mm -hmm. our, in our lives, like it's noticeable mm -hmm. because we understand who he is mm -hmm. and his immenseness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this. We were talking about this earlier, but one of the glaring signs that we don't understand who the father is, is we have a lack of the fear of God in our life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. If we don't, understand what the fear of God means, it shows that we don't understand who the father is mm. because he's the God of the Bible. He is the God that parted the Red Sea. Yeah. He's the God that brought 10 plagues upon Pharaoh and Egypt. He's the God that drowned a, an entire army. He's the God that equipped a, a sheep's herder, a young boy to kill a giant. He's still the God that holds everything in his hands. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Like, so when we begin in our relationship through love of the Father, mm -hmm. and we begin to just go after him, and he will show himself to us, and it makes the fear of God so relative in yeah. our life, just because we understand who he is. What do you have? I was just reading um, Exodus 20, 20. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, for God has come in order to test you, and in order that the fear of him that is a profound reverence for him will remain with you so that you do not sin. Mm. The fear of the Lord Amen. keeps you from sinning. Amen. That lifestyle, right? Yeah. When you begin to understand that he's the king on the throne mm -hmm. that sees all things, right? That he loves us enough to restore us as though we had never sinned. Yeah. Like he loves us and, and gave himself for us. Like that pushes us, brings us to the throne. And then we understand who he really is. The immenseness of the father, the immenseness of the one who created all the universes mm -hmm. that sits outside of time. It just makes a healthy reverence. Yeah. And that reverence makes us begin to want to go back at time and time and time and time and time again. Right. And the fear of God, said, it makes me look at my life and go, well, God, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah because the foundation is love yep. and my walk is in fear, right? Paul tells us to work out our own salvation in fear and yep. trembling. Yep. Amen. That's right. And so this is, this is a, uh, this could be one of the missing pieces in mm -hmm. our life. Like if we're struggling in this one area, have we not given it to God because we don't realize who he is, mm -hmm. the immenseness of the father that, that we don't, you know, have, have we been, well, I'm still struggling with this just because, you know, this is just who I am and I've just got to struggle. No, you don't have the fear of God in your life in that area. Come on, somebody. You check your relationship. Amen. You're still letting demons in your yeah. house through the movies that you're watching. Mm -hmm. It's because you don't have the fear of life, mm -hmm. or, uh, the fear of God over that area of your life. Right. You're still struggling with lust or porn. Right. It's because the fear of God has to wake up in your life and, and, and he will allow things to wake that fear up. Mm -hmm. Right. And to, to wake up the if, if we are walking with him and we're telling him out of our mouth that we are in love with the father in heaven. Right. But we still have all this trash in our life. He will allow things to encounter. Mm -hmm. He doesn't bring them. He doesn't yeah. tempt any man, but he does test you. Mm -hmm. The difference in a test, a, a temptation and a test. Right. Is because you the, the, the test is to make you better. Yeah. Right. A temptation is to watch you fall. The devil tempts, but the yeah. father will test you. Right. And the father tests us to see where we are at in our heart, mm -hmm. to see where we're at in our walk and for, so that we can become better. Right. right. And so we will we'll struggle it with a place in our life because we haven't grown into wisdom in those areas of our life. Oh, come on, somebody. That's good. Like when we when we have a place that we haven't been wise in our life, like we need to check if it's your money. Right. Check your money. Do I have the fear of God in my money? 
right? If it's, again, lust and perversion, right? If we have this spirit of lust that just keeps bothering us, have we searched out our life and said the fear of God needs to be in my life? And I, I you know, if I go to look at the opposite sex in a different way, right? Is there a fear of God that allows me? I need to pray for the fear of God yeah. over my eyes, over my ears, over my heart, right? I, if it's homosexuality, right? Do I have the fear of God that I, I'm telling him I love him with my mouth, but I'm yeah. walking contrary to his creation in a place that he even says it's an abomination, right? I have no fear of God, so I don't have any wisdom because the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Amen. Amen. The church needs the fear of God in it. Mm -hmm. The church needs to quit. We're not a country club. We're, we're, we're not a place that, that to go and that we're any better than anyone. Mm -hmm. We're not a place that, that needs to just make sure the, the, the coffee's right and we're selling muffins just perfect so we can draw a crowd somebody. We need the fear of God in our church. We have to have the fear of God in our church because that is what is going to make us look different mm -hmm. to the world. Jesus Amen. Christ himself had the fear of the Father in him. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't talk unless he's talking. I don't do unless he's doing. I'm not walking the way I want to walk. Yeah. I'm not going to that cross because I want to go. I'm going to the cross because I have the fear of the Father working through yeah. me. Amen? And so that's what we have. We have to get to that place in the American church. Mm -hmm. This is not going to be a popular message. Mm -mm. It's not going to be. But this will grow us when we have the reverence of the Lord in our life. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, my child will not walk into my house and talk to me any type of way. Right. He will see discipline, spare the rod, spoil the child. Mm -hmm. I'm going to whip that young boy <laughs> if he tries to walk up in my house and talk to me any type of way. I'm not going to beat him, but he will have, he will have a spanking, right? Mm -hmm. We have to understand how much more God is above us than I am over my own fleshly son, yeah. right? We have to have the fear of God that we don't just come in here talking about, you know, give me this and give me that, give me health, give me finance. Yeah. And we're not walking according to his word. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. That's right. Like it's only by grace that yeah. we're saved, right? My, our heart posture has mm -hmm. to be that, that it is only by grace mm -hmm. and mercy that he sent his son to love me. Mm -hmm. And I can only love him because he first loved me. Yeah. Right. My heart posture isn't going to the closet, just telling him what I need. Mm -hmm. It's lifting him up. Hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. You are hallowed. You are. The word hallowed is beautiful, man. It's set apart, mm -hmm. highly exalted, separated from all things. Mm -hmm. He is hallowed. He is holy. He is perfect in everything that he does. Can we just Amen? look that up? Hallowed means to worship. Yeah. Yeah, that he is worthy of worship. Yeah. He is worthy of the praise. He is worthy. That That's how we enter the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, and our churches, we have to get that way, no matter whether mm -hmm. it makes people feel good about themselves or not. Right? We're about to lose that. That's okay. That, like, um, but the fear of God has to be restored in our life. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Um, Proverbs 14. 1926 in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. Mm. I love that. Yeah. I love that because it's so contrary to what the world teaches us. Amen. Like when we have the fear of God operating in our life, when we have postured ourselves that God is God and we are his vessels and his children, there's a great confidence mm -hmm. that comes in that because that too is wisdom. Like we can have the wisdom, not as the world gives. And his children will have refuge. Amen. Fifteen, sixteen of Proverbs. Better is a little, uh, is a little with the fear of the Lord than a great treasure with tor turmoil in it. That's saying that there's peace. That there is peace in the fear of the Lord. That when we, when we, when we honor Him, that we can, we can just understand how great He is. And it's so incredible that there is a peace. There's a peace. We can be still and know that he is God. What places in our lives are we not still? What places in our life do we have the turmoil, right? What places in our life do we just need him to, to wreck us? That's when we walk in with the reverence to the father, mm -hmm. right? When he can come in and reverence and we welcome him, not haphazardly. Like when we understand this walk with the with who we're walking it with, there is never a dry moment. Yeah. 
There's never a dry moment. And we could begin to start looking, uh, looking at even our trials and tribulations as growing opportunities, right? Yeah. That we can trudge along this thing and understand that because he's God and because I've honored him as that, because I have fear of the Lord operating in my life, that this is an opportunity for me to learn that he is growing me in the wisdom because mm-hmm. I have I have the fear of the Lord. Amen. Mm-hmm. And so. Uh, um I love this Proverbs fourteen two. He who he who walks in in his uprightness fears the Lord. When we be, when we walk upright, there's an obvious sign of fearing the Lord. There's an obvious sign of the fear of the Lord in our life because we don't want to walk any other way. Again, synonymous. The, a holy lifestyle is synonymous to the mm-hmm. fear of the Lord, um, and the integrity of your ways your hope. Yeah. Um, But he who is devious in his ways despises him. Mm -hmm. Mm. Amen. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. I think that's where we have to get Mm -hmm. to to see the movement of God in our life, Mm -hmm. right? In a sustained manner. Because God, because he loves us, will move. God, because he loves us, rescued the children of Israel, mm-hmm. but they wandered for 40 years because they forgot the fear of the Lord. Faith comes through the fear of the Lord even, right? We see God move when we humble ourselves before him, give him the things of our life, and he moves and grows our grows our faith. Amen? Like, yeah. we need to learn the fear of the Lord mm-hmm. in our own walk, in our own life. Amen? Mm-hmm. And we need to quit allowing uh, a lost world to, to, to make us fear it more than we fear the Lord, right? We, we see our bank accounts getting low, guys, and, yeah. and we begin to fear. We begin to fear the things of this earth. We begin to allow um, depression and anxiety begins to weigh on us, and we forget the promises of God. Mm-hmm. And because we're not fearing God, we're not reverencing him as who he is. He's a promise keeper. He, t- he told us, like, I will keep my promises. My voice speaks and it does not return void and you see that that's the enemy yes john 10 10 says the thief comes to still kill and destroy yes. so look what he's doing it's constantly mm-hmm. telling you fear you're running out of money mm-hmm. anxiety mm-hmm. god doesn't give you that yeah yeah god doesn't give us a spirit of fear right not of the not as the world gives mm-hmm. amen and so, you know, when we come into these situations where the, the world begins to try to tell us, well, how, how, how am I supposed to possibly, you know, love this God that I'm supposed to fear? Right. We need to have these healthy conversations of what fear really means. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, uh, when I was in the world, right, I could have met. Oh, I don't know, some some famous person. And I would have reverenced that individual. I went and stood in front of a judge, right? Many times when I was young, I didn't talk however I wanted to talk in front of that judge. I didn't just do whatever I wanted to do in front of that judge, right? They tell you, tuck your shirt in, you tuck your shirt in, right? That was a fear because of the, the position that they hold, right? How much more should we revere? You know, How much more should we honor the Father? I do think that culture has uh, changed that a little bit because if you see how they treat the police officers, all the authority figures. Maybe that's kind of mm. why the fear has left mm. the church. Yeah, the enemy is because after culture, the church. The culture has pushed it down our throats. Absolutely, absolutely, guys. That's all I really had for tonight. Um, I just, I just want to encourage you. Like, if there's any place in your, in, hey, what's up, David? If there's any place in your life. Like that is isn't just under complete chaos. Mm-hmm. If there's any place that you're lacking wisdom uh, and, and, and you're just, uh, you're, you know, you're struggling with with the answers in a place. I just encourage you to make sure that those areas of your life are submitted to the father um, because he is who he is. I, and I just, I just submit to you right now that he is the promise keeper, mm-hmm. that he did already keep that promise in heavenly places that it is yes and amen the promise to that situation is yes and amen Mm -hmm. but you have to humble yourself before his hand and allow the fear of god to 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 just flourish in your life to begin to just usher in a place for him in your life just to be honored 
as yeah. the as the promise keeper, as the God of the heavens, as the God of the earth and everything underneath mm -hmm. it. Like he is God and he will keep his promise. Like don't don't let's let's not let, let's not enter enter into a place that ever in, in our life that we just treat God haphazard, mm -hmm. that we're just, well, it's just God. You know, yeah. and, and and that happens to us. I've, yeah, I've been I've been walking with the Lord now for 18 years. There's times that you get in your into your life and it's just kind of something that you mm -hmm. do. And it's a, it's a glaring sign that we're we're losing the fear of the Lord. Um, you know, Jesus talks about returning to your first love. Well, mm -hmm. I even I, I even submit to you that in returning to your first love, it's understanding who God is. Amen. Yeah. And it's understanding what he did for Even you. Knowing. Yeah, but understanding also our position, our yeah. position to the father as sons and daughters. Again, man, my son or daughter are not going to walk in my house and talk any type of way. Right. And that doesn't mean that I'm mad at them or I hate them or or, or any of these other things or I'm waiting mm -hmm. to get them. Right. Yeah. God's not waiting to get us. He loves us as sons mm -hmm. and daughters, but he's God. He yeah. is God. We also need to get into a place where even if he doesn't give us what we want, mm. is he still uh, worthy enough to be honored and praised? Mm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Because sometimes the answer is no. Yeah. Because he knows better. Mm -hmm. And the fear of the Lord helps us to understand that he knows better. And sometimes he tests us just to see if we if we just go up, come up to him for that. You know. Mm. What did Jesus say? Why y'all following me? Yeah. Tell me. Tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. You just want the blessing. You just want the food. You just want the drink. Mm -hmm. Right. Jesus checked. Jesus checked his, his followers, all yeah. his followers mm -hmm. after he after he fed all the multitudes. And he said, now you got to yeah. eat, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa mm -hmm. what you doing? And he said, what you following me for? Mm -hmm. You just follow me for the blessing. Yeah. Right. You, <laughs> He's God. Mm -hmm. Right. Jesus was God. Yeah. So sometimes he checks our heart. He, and, and that's a good thing. He mm -hmm. checks our heart posture just to make sure you ain't in it just for the bump and the blessing, are you? Yeah. Right? Like the fear of God has to remain in us, mm -hmm. that he's God, that he is God. And, and you know, I had a buddy, um, Travis, uh, they moved to Texas, wonderful man and, uh, and, and his whole family, just wonderful people yeah. of God. And uh, when we had this conversation one night and it was like, you know, so many of us in the American church want to treat God like he needs us. <laughs> Right. And it's like that he has to have our approval in our denomination to, to be able to be God. But straight up, God's God. <laughs> like He doesn't need our approval. You know, so many times we get into these conversations about what well, God's this and God's that. And uh, and, and we, we need to be able to reflect him in, in, in the earth that God is God. <laughs> he doesn't need our approval. He doesn't need us to check a box. Yeah. He doesn't need us to go, OK, God, that's what you can do in my life. Mm -hmm. Right. He's God. Yeah. And, and one, one day we go and stand before him mm -hmm. and that should bring out a healthy fear mm -hmm. of the Lord. Yeah. Not a bad fear. Mm -mm. Not a bad fear because he's God. Yeah. Because he's God. And he loves us mm -hmm. and he's good to us and his, his mercies endure forever. He's patient. He's so patient. You know, sometimes I get to thinking about it and I'm like, Lord, how? How, how have you just not returned yet and burnt this whole thing down? But yeah. it's because of his great love, man. Mm -hmm. He desires that no, no one, man yeah, should perish, no perish, right? Amen, Todd. And so, uh, man, that, that that's a huge statement. That's a huge statement. Like many of us would think that, you know, Jesus has got to be kind of just standing up and kind of leaning back toward earth going, all right, Father, is it time yet? <laughs> <laughs> like this thing's gotten out of hand, hasn't it? <laughs> it's like it, well, it's, it's time to go on back and burn it up, right? And But he's, you know, he desires that none of us should perish. Yep. Man. Yeah. But we have to revere God in our life mm. and it will begin to shut out so much anxiety mm -hmm. of what they said, what they did to me. You know, is this going to go wrong? Uh, because with, with the fear of God comes trust in God. Mm -hmm. It just becomes trust because he shows us who, we, who he is yeah. time and time and time and time again. Amen. And so we love you guys. Yeah. Um, we, we'll pray for anybody. If you need prayer tonight, you know, you could drop it in the comments. Um, and, and we would, we'd love to pray for you guys, but straight up, you know, I even get this, get this thought of like the JV team and, um, and, and the varsity team, you know, when we go into ninth grade, you know, we're, we're, we're going to play not with the big dogs. We're, we're, we're going to play on the JV team. We're going to play on the J, JV squad. And that's kind of the lost world to me, right? We're still playing the game. 
but we don't get in with the big boys. Like, but when, when, when you begin to grow and develop, like you hit this other level and it's time for the fear of God. It's mm -hmm. time that you, you better know the playbook better. Mm -hmm. You better, if you want to get on the field, right, you, you better be able to work harder, lift mm -hmm. more, run faster. And, and, and that's kind of the, to me, cause I'm a football guy, mm -hmm. right? I think about that so often that the fear of God is kind of our transition from JV, the lost world into the church. Mm -hmm. Because when we begin to get the fear of God in our life, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's going to draw me back. That's going to draw me back to, to, to looking at and examining myself going, man, did mm -hmm. I mess this thing up today? Yeah. Did I, did, did I fall God? Mm -hmm. Because I want to stand in front of you one day and hear well done, good and faithful Amen. servant. I, I want to live my life in such a way that 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 I'm not just haphazard with your grace and spitting at the foot of the cross. You know, the Bible tells us in, in, in Hebrews 10, it basically talks about falling away and how we can scoff at the cross at the work that's already been done for us. Right. That's a fear of mine. Mm -hmm. That is a, that that is something that I want to check and examine my life. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. I want to check my life. I want to look at my life and the way I live it before I have to stand in front of him and give an account for it. I want to have a fear of an understanding that, man, did I do what I was supposed to do today in the eyes of the father? Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to grab. I want to play in the varsity. Mm -hmm. I, want, I, want, I want to play in the big boy league. Right. Yeah. You know, I have found out that being junior and Pacey is getting so much older that the fear hits you of when they're moving now. Did I do enough? Did I teach them enough? You know, that fear comes on you of fear of the Lord. Of, are you, did you do it? Did you do enough? Telling them about the scripture because, you know, they get, they're getting out there and they're, they're hitting the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. That that reverence in the relationship is where it's at. I keep the lesson going. I said it's faint and all this glory. Yes, amen. Amen. I like what she said up at the top. What? The yeah. closer. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. So true. The closer the relationship, the greater the mm -hmm. fear and all to reverence him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, it, it's it's so important. Yeah. And you know, like like we were talking about earlier. If, if you don't have fear of God operating in your life, you don't know him mm -hmm. straight up. Like, because once you, once you understand the King and, and, and just how amazing and awesome and, and omnipotent and omnipresent mm -hmm. and how he can be everywhere at once and how he's just through all time at once. And that, wow. Wow. Yeah. And so the, the more you, the more you learn him, the more you, mm -hmm. he reveals himself uh, and his characteristics and who he is to you. You just honor him mm -hmm. <laughs> because again, how in the world did he make a place for me? Yeah. You know, and, and all of my stuff and all of my crazy and all the things that I've messed up and done wrong. How did he still make a place for me? Mm -hmm. So I reverence him. I reverence him with my life. Amen. So, I hope this blessed you guys. Um, love y'all. Uh, and, and, you know, again, uh, we are announcing that we will be having our next event in October. Um, it will be at the beginning of October and we will get a, uh, uh, well, be in, a banner in put together. One of those weekends of October. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we will get a banner put together soon yeah. and get it out. So yeah. we love you guys. Have a blessed night. And um, oh, just look, be encouraged in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Good night.